Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we're with uh, video number 10 from our packaging series and we're going to be talking about integrated silicon photonics. Now this is a brand new topic we haven't even mentioned before but it's really interesting so I suggest you guys all stay and watch the video. My name is Alonso, thanks for being here with me today and let's just jump straight into the video. Um, so the big main question is what are silicon photonics? Maybe not everyone is familiar, so let's give a quick descri uh, description. Silicon photonics is the implementation of high density photonic integrated circuits by means of CMOS processes. Now, what do we mean by CMOS processes? We mean the, the same kind of process that we use in fabs to generate silicon wafers, to generate silicon electronics. But in this case, uh, we use that same technology and machinery to create photonic components. And that's why they work so well together. Um, now, the difference between photonics and electronics, if you were to compare them, is that photonics uses light or photons instead of electricity to transmit their information. And uh, this works because light is conducted inside of the waveguides. Uh, you know, thanks to the refractive index differences between inside and outside the waveguide, the light uh, bounces inside, but ideally it doesn't leak out. And this is a very efficient way of uh, transmitting information from one point to another one. Also, thanks to some, you know, uh, physical properties, we can manipulate this light and generate different photonic components uh, that can, you know, come together to make circuits. Now, the development of silicon photonics started in the early 1990s, so it's a fairly recent technology and it's still in its early stages, uh, but it's being researched by a lot of technologies, being developed um, by a lot of companies, and uh, it's a really promising stage of packaging in the near future. Now, what are the big advantages of silicon photonics? Well, the biggest one and the main reason why silicon is chosen over other uh, semiconductors for photonics is something we've already mentioned, is uh, the fact that we can use silicon technology at the fabs. Uh, because we already have all of this machinery, it's much, much cheaper and easier to develop silicon photonics rather than using other semiconductors. And that is the main economical reason why silicon is chosen. Now, uh, this also offers a good integration with electronics because you can uh, make the use the same machines, make them on the same place. Uh, it's all made of silicon. This allows for a very good integration between uh, photonics and electronics when we're talking about, you know, the silicon aspect. Now, photonics in general offer a lot of advantages. They have reduced power. They have higher efficiency, lower latency and higher bandwidth because light is a better you know photonics and and waveguides are a better transmitter of information than uh another material like copper uh also when comparing it to copper this offers reduced cost for high volumes so once we start to mass produce these things it should bring the cost of chips down a little bit um and this is all you know viable obviously you know silicon might not be the best material for photonics but it is viable and this is thanks to uh the silicon properties that allow for manipulation of light and these would be the care effect and the raman effect and thanks to these two we're able to manipulate the light uh, inside of the silicon to have it perform the functions that we we want it to perform so uh knowing this we can now create different components that do different things and uh, the main one and the basic uh, building block would be the interconnects, which, you know, would be optic fiber, waveguides. We've um, mentioned these already. And uh, they're basically your building blocks with which then you're going to make other stuff. Another very important component would be the transceivers. Now, the transceivers transfer the, uh, the information from electrical to optical signals. And this is very important when we're talking about integration. This has been used also for a long time in things like, you know, data centers where they use fiber optics for communications, things like that. Um, so transceivers are very important uh, and they need two main things, a light source or a laser and a photodiode. The light source obviously um, will go from, uh, you know, with an electrical signal, it can then perform an optical signal and it'll create the light or the laser and the photodiode will receive the light and then transform that into an electrical signal. Now, when we're talking about um, uh, light sources, this is a very interesting uh, topic because silicon is an indirect semiconductor. So silicon cannot be a laser. So we need a 3-5 semiconductor uh, with a direct band gap to 
to act as the laser and you can have it on or off chip and you know traditionally it's been off chip but there's been some attempts to grow a 3.5 semiconductor crystal directly on top of the silicon and while this is very complicated if achieved this would really make the the process a lot better and more efficient and it's kind of uh you know a big technology uh step that we're trying to take Another uh, very important component would be the optical modulators, and uh, these also play a big part in in the inside of the transceivers because uh, mainly the laser sh would always be on, and we can see how the incident beam is usually always on, and then based on an electrical signal, we modulate the incoming optical signal to you know transmit whatever information we wanted into an optical signal so we can modulate signals we can uh use this to trans uh, transmit information or you know just modulate whatever signal we want in an optical way and and this is also very important uh, some other components we have things like wavelength filters you know it's very important to make sure you're working with the right wavelength the right frequency and uh you can do this thanks to you know geometry and physical properties of the silicon and of the light we have things like resonators this here is for example a ring resonator and based on its geometry it resonates with with a specific wavelength so it strengthens and uh you know enhances that specific um wavelength we also have components like uh, multiplexers and demultiplexers which can be really important when we're talking about uh, chips and transmitting information because they allow for uh, fewer inputs um, but they're still able to transmit the same amount of information and then we also have a couple of uh, basic components like couplers and splitters couplers take two inputs and mix them into one output and splitters takes one input and mix into two outputs these are very important for routing the light uh within a within a chip to wherever we need it to be because uh routing the light to the right places is one of the biggest parts in photonic um circuits and then finally we have some fiber interfaces here we have a uh, grading which basically takes the optic fiber uh, is bringing all of the light and we're going to be able to make uh, catch it basically with this grading in a very efficient way and then have it be trapped um, inside of the waveguide and and so these interfaces are also very important for interconnections uh, maybe with like off chip things or you know just like interfacing between different different components so all of these things can then be put together to f to create what we call uh, photonic integrated circuits um so a photonic integrated circuit integrates the light source transportation filtering modulation and detection all in one chip with some function to perform right um so we have some of uh, these components that we've talked about were passive and some of them were active now the passive components don't don't need um any electronic input to perform these can be like the filters or the resonators but then we have the active devices like for example the modulators which require an electronic input to to then perform you know their function or they change their function based on an electrical input um now for for these circuits geometry is very important like i say we need to respect the the geometry constraints and we need to make sure that all of this works together and uh and once we have a working design we can have even like programmable uh photonic ic's and this here is an example this is a real life example from the polytechnic university of valencia and they have uh, each of these nodes is a splitter um coupler uh combo basically that is tunable so they can reroute the light whichever way they want and you know for example here we can see that if you have a light input you can reroute it where you need you can take it to a filter you can take it to a modulator you can take it to different functions and and reroute the light take it wherever you need and you can program this uh, from a computer so you can actually have some processing power based on photonics um obviously you know you would have some active components that rely on electronics but you can perform the the processing um you know very simple processing for now but uh it's being developed and it's expected to grow in the future years so uh you know photonic processors are a reality and and we'll see where that takes us so this is one of the first uses for uh, photonics that we're going to see. The other one, which is also very interesting, is using the the photonics as the interconnects um, 
for a variety of different purposes you know the main use right now is for long distance interconnects and we're talking on like meters or or longer distances and this is mainly used for data centers or ethernet cables uh things like that that are very long you know optic fiber will make a much better interconnect than copper or like you know an electrical wire um however when we're talking about silicon photonics we want to see uh how good they would make an interconnection for chips and there's a there's a problem right now that needs to be overcome with this which is a power offset when switching from electrical to optical obviously every time we switch there's a little bit of an offset so every t you know we were mentioned that um silicon or photonic um interconnects are more power efficient than electrical interconnects but with this power offset there is a size limitation so once we get better components and we can overcome this little uh, power offset then these interconnections will become smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and eventually uh, hopefully be part of on-chip interconnects um, but as of right now you know this power offset makes it so that uh, there is a minimum distance that uh, where it doesn't make sense to use photonics rather than electronics um, the good news is that silicon uh, allows for a very small waveguides and a very small turn radius. So, you know, once this um, hurdle can be overcome, then we should be able to use silicon uh, photonic interconnects for on-chip or in-between chip interconnects. And this should really improve the efficiency and performance of the chips. Now, how do photonics and electronics work together? Besides, you know, we talked about some um we talked about some uh, active components that need uh, electronic input but how can they come together in a chip well uh the big thing is to use fab processes to integrate the silicon photonics with the electronic like we said the fabs can generate both you know an electronic layer photonics layer and uh, they can now be combined um there is you know a, a trade-off and discussion between flip chip or monolithic integration flip chip is way easier monolithic is kind of like the holy grail that uh, it's being like aimed towards but it, um it's more complicated uh but flip chip has the problem that you need to align align you know the components together and the alignment can be a big issue when we're talking about photonics because you know uh, again geometry plays a big part in this now the main architectures that are being explored are 3d or 2.5d architectures uh and in, in a lot of cases we're seeing that uh they have a photonic layer uh maybe a photonic um or interconnect network and they have them basically divided into layers and then connected with through silicon vias um and then there's also the discussion like we uh briefly mentioned earlier about the light source having it on chip or off chip uh having it on chip can be very difficult but way more efficient however it has the problem of heat management which we're going to look at in the next slide um so sometimes having an off chip uh laser is preferred for for different reasons thermal you know it's easier to to assemble so you know it depends on what you're prioritizing you might want a light source that is on the chip versus an off chip uh light source um, and then there's, you know, different levels of integration. We have a uh, chip level, which is, you know, integrating electronic and photonic circuits into one single product, uh, and then just basically connecting them. This is slow and expensive process, and it's not efficient. And then we have wafer level integration. Uh, it's basically a fabrication and assembly of uh, photonic circuits at a wafer level with electronic circuits. Uh, this is already started and, uh, you know, the cost of this is only going to go lower and lower as it gets better. And as we start producing in, you know, mass uh, volumes, this is going to get better. And then finally, we have the system and package where the systems are manufactured individually to maximize performance and functionality. And then they're brought together under a single under a single package this offers the highest functional density and performance lower latency lower cost and power uh, but you know it has a lot of different uh, challenges to be overcome it's much more difficult to to integrate together um, so uh, it, we'll see how this gets developed in the future now what are you know we mentioned all of the advantages and you know it looks like photonics are great but obviously they have some challenges and uh, limitations that we might have to get over or get around them uh, one of the bigger ones is as we start to say thermal management 
of some of the photonic components, you know, like the lasers and the modulators, uh, they can really dissipate a lot of heat. And we see here, for example, uh, that from for a, a 100 watt laser, 55 watts ends up being waste heat and only 45 watts goes towards the laser light. So if this is integrated inside of the chip, this can really create a thermal management problem, especially, you know, with like 3D architectures that already have some issues with uh, thermal management. This can add to that problem and it's something that needs to be taken into account. Another limitation is the physical density of the bandwidth and the size requirements. Like we said several times, geometry is important. You need to take into account your bandwidth, your, you know, um, the different physical requirements for the photonics, you know, the turn radius of your wavelengths, all of those things that, you know, electronics are getting smaller and smaller and they can't really wait for photonics. So uh, we'll see how this plays a role into integrating uh, photonics and electronics to a miniature size because it could be potentially an issue. Um, we also have a high cost for prototypes and development, you know, and we said that it would be lower cost once we're producing in high volume, you know, because the materials would be cheaper. But then again, it's still in a development stage and, and creating prototypes, developing can uh, cost a lot of money. So, you know, thank God we have uh, technologies, investing uh, companies, investing a lot of money into these technologies. But, you know, it's still it's still a big cost to pay. Uh, we also have, again, we, we mentioned this power offset between uh, switching from electrical to optical. This is also one of the biggest limitations as to why and the reason why um, uh, photonic interconnects are not being used on chip right now. So hopefully this can be uh, overcome in the future. And for that, we would need better and smaller components. Uh, you know, once these are more efficient, smaller, uh, some of these challenges that we're seeing today um, with better technology, we'll be able to overcome them and then uh, we'll really be able to step up the performance of chips and, and the interconnect technology and all of those things. So how are, how are photonics being applied today? Uh, well, like I said, it's still mainly in development and it's hard to find uh, current examples of this being used because it's like such a new technology, but uh, we found a couple of applications for AI in one example is this processor made by light matter uh, they're making a, a photonics processor um, based on photonic calculations they make fast uh, simple calculations and they use photonic circuits for that they can do things like image processing or simple algorithms uh, but obviously it's nowhere near as powerful as an electronic processor can be uh, these days but you know it's a good proof of concept and it shows that it's possible and it's only the beginning and it's only getting better from here the other thing that's uh, mainly being developed is optical links and we can find examples from ir labs or intel and they're working on chip to chip optical connectivity um like i said it's still in their development there's still some challenges to make this happen but uh it seems like it's it's the path where this is going and it seems like it'll be a reality in the not so distant future um and and we we can see a little bit from this development that the silicon photonics is better suited for interconnects than it is for computation um but it's good to know that you know there are applications for both of them and i'm sure that uh it'll be nice to have them and and we'll be able to find applications for both of these technologies now uh where do we project photonics to be in the future well the biggest thing once again, is being able to connect uh, on being able to make interconnects for on-chip uh, CMOS photonic uh, electronic integration. Uh, once we can make the interconnects out of photonics, the performance will go way up. It'll be a lot better. The other application we see is computing an AI. And like I said, this is only the beginning. We'll see where this takes us. Um, it seems like there's really a bright future ahead of us in terms of photonics and maybe a hybrid uh, processor uh we'll see uh, obviously this is under development so we'll see where the future takes us but it's definitely very exciting and then in terms of applications for the future uh there's lots of different places where photonics can be applied one of the biggest ones is telecom you know with the 5g nowadays and uh, potentially higher speeds in the future uh um, photonics is going to play a big role in in telecom you know 
and things like that we also have uh another area with the sensors which can be applied to lots of different fields like medical field security um and these sensors can also be applied to the automotive field especially with lidar you know with all these smart cars and self-driving cars um uh lidar sensors are going to be very important and you know photonics play a big role in that and then obviously once all of these technologies uh start to find some uses uh there's two main fields that are always at the vanguard or of of you know technology and that's aeronautics and defense so once all of these technologies start to prosper we're sure to see applications in all of these fields so to do a quick recap uh photonics uh use light to transmit information the light is transmitted inside of the waveguides and thanks to some physical properties you can um modify uh the light and you can you know perform different functions on it and have different components and you can bring them together into a photonic circuit and these photonic circuits can perform different functions they can modulate they can you know uh change from optical to electrical uh, which is a very important thing when we're talking about integration uh you know and, uh, photonics electronic integration is a big topic it's being developed by a lot of companies it's one of the talking points for the future of packaging and the future of heterogeneous integration and um it's being highly looked at currently and highly developed there's some applications for it already like ai or some interconnects and there's no doubt that it's only going to uh increase and it's only going to um get better and eventually it's sure to be the future of packaging of interconnects um and and of uh, heterogeneous integration photonics are here to stay and they are wonderful and even though they have some limitations i'm sure that uh we'll be able to overcome those those challenges and and they look like this could really be the next big step to develop electronics in the semiconductor industry um so that's it for today thank you all for watching i appreciate you very much and uh with that being said um i'll see you guys in the next video thanks for watching have a great day and bye bye